What's up guys? So welcome to MacroCode and today we are going to learn about integrating web API to our SP.NET Core web app. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and watching our previous videos. So we are going to consume a web API and be able to populate data in our SP.NET Core web app. So to first uh, do this, we are going to create an empty sp.net core web app uh, we are using sp.net core model view controller so we are going to create so you can say sample you can call these uh, web sp.net web api sp.net web api then you are going to create using sp.net core uh, framework that is .NET 7 then uh, we are going to leave it as it is then we can create our project so our project is here so <clears throat> it has created our program.cs we have the app settings.json where we can connect our application to our database then we have our home controller so if we launch our application so this is just a default sample web app in sp.net core so we are going to see how we are going to connect these and be able to populate data from an api so we can actually do that so <clears throat> instead of uh, so this is our simple web app so to begin with we are going to install what we call refit so we are going to install a refit so just click on our project then manage then let's just stop it so you can do this manage nuggets then you are going to install a refit so search here refit So you are going to install, uh, we can actually install these three. So install the first one, install this, the second one, and you can also install the Refit Newton Soft JSON. So we have installed the nuggets. So if you come to our dependencies, under the packages, we have the Refit, uh, all the three nuggets. So the next thing that we need to do, we are going to create a model. So under model, let's create a model that uh, we are going to, the fields, that is the data that you are going to uh, actually pre-populate. So let's call this uh, sample post. So under this sample post, you can have a public int user ID. So do that then copy that uh, this one you are going to have id then you are going to have a title string then also going to have a body so this is our sample our model so <clears throat> we are going to create a service so let's create uh, an interface. So we'll create a folder. Just create a folder called interfaces. Then on our folder, we'll create, we'll create our interface. Uh, new item. Then interface, we can call this I API connection. So you can call that I API connection. So on our interface, we are going to define the, the endpoint that we are going to call. So just do that. Then we can say, get a sample posts. Then here we are going to have, we'll be getting a list of our sample posts model. So we are going to get that. Then we need to define this. This is a get method. So we'll do this. So then here we can say get. 
So it is using Refit. You can see at the top, it has imported. Then we can now do provide the endpoint, which is our, so we'll just call it posts. So this is our endpoint. So I'll show you how <coughs> the, the, the API. But before we do that, we need to register and configure our, our program.cs. So come to our program.cs, then inside here, we'll say builder dot services dot say add refit, add refit, add refit client. So just do that. Then here we can import refit, use refit. Then inside here, we can say, we can pass our, our interface, I API connection. Then, so this one should be, we can do this, we can do this, then we can close. Sorry, so that is it. Then here we can say configure HTTP client. Then we need to pass our API C dot base address of our API, which is equals to new URI. Then we need to pass now our our we need to pass our API link. So the API link that you are going to use is HTTPS. I'll just do HTT, HTTPS. So then JSON place holder dot type type code type code dot com. So if we copy this link. It should take us to a site. So just paste it on the browser. So we are going to use this free fake API to actually demonstrate that. So we are going to use JSON placeholder to demonstrate to demonstrate this. So we, are, we can recopy that to ensure that we have the correct link and paste it there. Then we can now close we can now close this. So that is good. So we are fine to proceed. So the next thing is uh, we need to get our post and bind it to our home page. So on our home controller, we need to, to change something. So here we need to add our read only. So we need to add our I API connection. So this will be API connection. So we can do this. Then here we need to have it. I API connection. So it will be that way. Then you can minimize this. Then here we can do underscore API connection. Then on our action task, so what we need to do, you can have this as asynchronous. You can say async, then we do uh, task, I action result. Then we need to return now our data to our view. So you can say for variable posts feedback. You can say feedback post feedback posts is equals to await API connection, then dot get, you remember the get sample post that we had defined? That is it. So once we get this uh, feedback post, then we need to return it here on our view. So we need to alter something on our, our view, come to our view, then on, then index, so under index, we are going to create a table. 
So we are going to create a table that will be able to populate the data that we get from the API. So let's create a table. Table. Then we have our class. We can call that table. And then inside our table, we can define our table header. Inside our table header, table rows. Then table head. Then, then we can we can now need we need something also. We need to import our model that we'll be having. So you can say at model i enumerable i enumerable then we pass our project so you can say model you can say sp you can say you can just pass up you can do this you can copy that then paste it here then say models then dot just need our model so you can say models we need to import need to do this dot models dot sample post then we can have these as i enumerable enumerable then you can do this enumerable enumerable sorry so that is it <clears throat> so the next thing that we need to do is to actually display to display the HTML dot display name display name then model is equals to you can say model display name for this will be display name for you can say display name for you can say model Costume model dot so we can start with the user ID. So that is it for our first header. Our second header will be ID. Our third one will be title. Our fourth one will be body. Our fifth one. No, I think that is fine. So we need to define now how uh, so you can you can do this for actions. Then we can close our we had closed our table row. That that's good. Our table header is also closed, so we can have our table body body. Then here now we need to loop. We need to look through the list of items that we receive from our API. So variable item in model model. Then we do this. Then inside here we proceed with our creation of our table. Then we can have our table data. So our table data will be at HTML dot display ne display for then we can now define model item model item model item and say model item dot user id no, it will be item this will be model item then you say item dot user sorry user id so 
So you can copy this to ensure that this <coughs> table data corresponds with the table headers uh, there. So we'll say ID, ID, then we have this, say title, then we can copy again, then you can have this as body. So that is it guys. So we have been able to bind our our data now to to our project. So what we need to do is to launch it and we see what will happen. So if we do this, we can launch our application and we can put in the uh, breakpoint at our here so that we see what happens. We can see it has hit there. So if we step feedback, you can see it has 100 items. So if you open each of the items, you see it has the body, ID, title, and the user ID. So it has actually connected to our API uh, through the through the these using this endpoint. And remember, our API link is under program.cs and the link is here. So you can see this is the link. So if you want to connect to any API, that is how you do it. So you can actually bind it to your API and connect data and consume it using a refit. Uh, so that is how you do. Uh, so if we proceed, let's see if our data will be able to good. You can see this is our data. We have the user ID, ID title body, and we have each of the records that we have uh pull from our sample api so that is it guys on how to connect sp.net core with our api and consume data from an api using a, 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 a refit so we have been able to create an api wrapper with refit on dotnet core uh, uh, 7.0 so if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing, uh, comment down below in case you have any clarification and see you in our next video.